Hello, so uh, my name is uh, Rania Abdelgani and today I'm presenting our work entitled Conversational Agents for Fostering Curiosity Driven Learning in Children. This is a work done at the INRIA Research Center in Bordeaux in France in a collaboration with the French EdTech company Evidence B and the Human Computer Lab in Waterloo, Canada and the University of Bordeaux. So let me start with an introduction and some motivations to our work. So, uh, teaching strategies that rely on giving direct instructions to children have long been used in our classrooms and proven to be rather effective with learning standardized pedagogical content. Yet, it has been shown that children learn and memorize the information better when they look for it and retrieve it themselves, rather than when it's simply passed to them by their teachers or parents. These curiosity-based uh, learning strategies offer them a more personalized, enjoyable, and engaging learning experience. For this reason, we choose to focus our work on developing technology-enhanced activities that train children to be more curious in order to enhance their learning experiences and outcomes. So before going any further, I would like to start by um, defining epistemic curiosity more formally and uh, presenting the framework that guides our design choices. So epistemic curiosity is defined as the desire to know, to see, or to experience that motivates exploratory behaviors towards the acquisition of new information. Curiosity theories explain that this desire is primarily stimulated by an awareness of a missing information in one's um, knowledge. So this is what is called also the awareness of knowledge gaps. At its turn, this awareness of the unknown is aroused by external situations such as novel or surprising stimuli and the individual's ability to reflect on uh, his own knowledge. So with this model of curiosity, we can see and understand that training curiosity-driven uh, behaviors should start by eliciting the processes that are uh, involved in its stimulation. So our work is also motivated by recent research that shows that in addition to being a state or a process, curiosity can also be a malleable skill that can be explicitly trained and um, uh, fosters in classrooms. Girard, for example, uh, suggests that students' curiosity can be enhanced by providing time for self-reflection, promoting comfort with uncertainties and encouraging information searching behaviors, such as asking questions or exploring new solutions. Pre previous work have explored using new technologies to this end. For example, Siha and Al use social robots that exhibit curiosity-driven uh, behaviors and investigated if, can, if children can catch uh, these kinds of behaviors. Alaimi and Al propose a training to help children practice asking questions, as it is the primary expression of curiosity. So both studies showed um, a positive uh, positive results on children's short-term curiosity scores, but both studies also did not explore training the mechanism or the mechan metacognitive mechanisms that are involved in el eliciting curiosity, as suggested by our, by our model, nor did they explore the link with uh, children's learning strategies and outcomes. So, uh, with this work, we try to go this one step further by designing a technology-enhanced curiosity training that begins by eliciting the elements that are involved in stimulating curiosity, i.e. the novel uh, stimuli and the ability to self-reflect, as well as the information-seeking um, uh, behaviors themselves. And we also try to investigate the impact of these kinds of behavior on children's uh, learning uh, progress. So, our proposed solution is a web-based um, prototype called Kids Ask. Uh, it involved an interaction uh, between the child and the conversational agent as a, as a tutor. So Kids Ask offers three different workspaces. One, when we try to elicit uh, children's curiosity via training their ability to self-reflect in the first um, in the first workspace. A second workspace when we uh, try to um, train their ability to see their uncertainties or uh, knowledge gaps and turn them into um, into learning goals by um, asking the uh, correct and higher level questions. And three, we try to um, uh, and uh, and three, a uh, final workspace when uh, we try to encourage children to use these questions in order to maintain and shape um, efficient, uh, efficient and autonomous explorations of their uh, educational um, resources. So uh, let me start with the first uh, workspace, which is the workspace to elicit curiosity. So our um, 
platform handles this with, uh, by proposing a series of quizzes with questions that are likely to poke children's curiosity. Children here either choose to answer the questions uh, proposed by the agent or uh, choose to pass it. If they do choose to answer the question, the agent will ask them to report their confidence level in the answer they just gave. So we choose this setup as research suggests that giving children these possibilities can help them self-reflect and uh, more probe the metacognition and help allows them to think deeper about what they do and do not know. And therefore, this will motivate them to uh, report lower uh, certainty level and be more curious. So here, as you can understand, we are working on the first part of our uh, curiosity model. So after this uh, space, children move to the QA training, uh, QA training space where they have, um, where where we want to them to work on identifying their knowledge gaps and uh, transforming them into. Um, learning goals by asking higher level questions. So concurrently, we do this by um, offering different texts related to a theme of the children's choice. And for each uh, uh, text, children will interact with the agents that will try to help them think of curiosity-driven questions. It will do so by proposing two types of cues. The first type is a higher order questioning word that we want the child to start his question with. So this cue can help children avoid superficial questions that start with is, are, etc., and the, the, the answer, and to which the answer is typically um, a simple no uh, or yes, etc. So we want them to think of profound questions. In this example, for uh, we have uh, proposed a how. So the second type of cues is a new piece of information that is related to the text but is unknown to the child. It actually represents an answer to a possible curiosity-driven question about the text. We give this cue to prevent children from generating questions to which the answers are already mentioned in the text. We want them to think of questions that will lead them to acquire new and extra information that go beyond the content uh, they have in front of them. In this SNP, for example, the piece of information is, our body has special cells to protect him from viruses. The child is then asked by the agent to use these cues to find the corresponding question. So, uh, for this example, uh, one possible question would be, how does our body protect itself from viruses? This cue is, uh, as you may have understood, uh, a proposition for a possible knowledge gap that we want the children to realize that he's, um, they're missing and pursue it in order to extend their knowledge. We rely on the idea is that uh, not knowing an information is missing is the first and most important obstacle that keeps children from being curious and from asking questions. So here we are working in the second part of our uh, curiosity model when we um, try to, uh, to prompt children into thinking of possible knowledge gaps and uh, transforming them into questions that they can pursue. So uh, when testing this platform with children and in order to um, investigate the efficiency of such an approach, uh, we had a different, we have another group where we didn't, we did not give this proposition of knowledge gap and we had a neutral agent that uh, simply asked children if they had any questions. So here we are uh, not training this um, part of our curiosity model. Uh, and the idea is to investigate further on uh, the difference in the performance between the two groups. And finally, our third, um, our third working space is the exploration, is what we call an exploration working space. So children from both conditions come to the, have the uh, same exploration space when, they, when we want to train their ability to maintain intrinsically motivated explorations in order to gain new knowledge uh, autonomously. We also wanted to investigate whether or not their question asking abilities that um, were trained in the previous um, workspace can help them maintain and shape their explorations and of course if we can see differences between our two groups so concretely in this space uh, children have a library of animated educational videos that are not initially all accessible every time the child watches a video the agent will reappear and encourage them to continue exploring new videos they require them to ask uh, curious uh, questions in order um, about the question uh, about the video sorry that they just saw in order uh, for the agent to unlock new videos for them so the more questions the child generates the more uh, the agents will open new videos for them um, that may contain the answers to their questions 
children could uh, end this uh, session whenever they wanted if they, they did not feel curious about discovering the hidden material anymore. So here we are working on the last part of our curiosity um, model where we train children's ability to constantly evaluate the value of the uh, new information they just acquired uh, in order to not to stop learning in a premature way. So, uh, for the results, we started by investigating uh, the questions asking uh, behaviors of children from the two different groups. So, groups who had the propositions of uh, knowledge gaps and groups who did not. So, our results indeed uh, showed um, a better, a statistically better performance for children who had the propositions for knowledge gaps, both in terms of the number of curiosity-driven questions uh, that they have asked during the training, so when we, they had the agent support, and during the exploration when they did not have any support. So here, as you can see, our control, uh, our experimental group, sorry, uh, asked uh, significantly more questions. Uh, children from this group also had uh, have generated questions with a significantly better syntactic score both also during the uh, two sessions. So uh, we evaluated this with a standardized grid uh, that took into uh, consideration the questioning words used, um, the syntactic construction of the question, etc. Moving on to the time spent in exploration, uh, this is a metric that reflects the number of resources that children were uh, interested in seeing uh, autonomously during their exploration. And since children were free to stop whenever they wanted, this also becomes a behavioral curiosity measure for us. So as you can see, children from the experimental group were uh, more successful in maintaining their, exp their exploratory behaviors and thus were more curious. Their behaviors were also shown to be positively correlated to the question asking training they had. So we can suggest that the more our agents helped uh, children think of curiosity driven uh, questions during the training, the more they were able to do the same thing during the next phase and maintain their um, explorations. So here we uh, can see kind of a transfer element of our training in new contexts. And finally, for the domain learning, um, domain knowledge learning progress, we saw that children who had the propositions of the um, knowledge gaps gained significantly more new information than the uh, group that did not have this, even though the two had similar uh, initial uh, levels. In analyzing the effect of the curious behaviors of, uh, on this observation, we ran a Mankova test and we saw indeed a positive correlation uh, relationship sorry, between the intensity of, the ch of a child's curiosity-driven behaviors and, the uh, and their achievement in gaining new competencies. So, uh, in conclusion, our main results suggest that uh, our incentive, uh, incentive uh, training, so our approach to propose knowledge gaps uh, to children, was successful in enhancing their uh, knowledge gap awareness and curiosity-driven question-asking abilities, as well as their ability to maintain um, autonomous explorations of their educational uh, workspaces. Uh, our training also helped children gain uh, more new um, knowledge on their own thanks to their curiosity. However, we saw of course some limitations uh, uh, and we have ideas for future, to, for future directions. So first of all, there is the lack of interactivity in the dialogue between the agent and the child. Uh, as you can see, so it, uh, um, the agent do not have computational uh, powers to uh, give immediate feedback uh, to the child, for example. Uh, also, we have the lack of scalability of the approach, given that um, our implementation here depends on the specific uh, educational resources we had in the platform. So, for future direct directions, we want to uh, we are working on um, implementing a more intelligent agent that can be um, more engaging with children um, uh, by giving some examples and some, uh, some immediate feedbacks. Uh, and we also want to implement a more generalizable approach that is easier to implement and to transfer into different activities. So here we uh, want to uh, explore using uh, natural language processing methods and, um, and maybe large language models to um, condition our agents' uh, behaviors. So as a conclusion, I would say that with this work, we show that curiosity-driven behaviors can be practiced with the help of conversational agents as tutors, and that training the faculty to stop 
think and ask uh, curiosity-driven questions while learning might be a valuable strategy to be fostered in children in order to prevent them from interrupting the information cycles uh, prematurely. Uh, so these results can uh, motivate the implementation of such approaches both in the classroom settings and in learning environments. So that's it for me. Thank you very much for your attention. I will gladly take some questions and for any further inquiries, please uh, do not hesitate to reach out. Thank you.